Shabbat Shalom. Giving all praise and glory to the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's worthy to be praised for everything. Hallelujah to his glorious and holy name. As always, I'm going to start off with Colossians 3 and 17. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all. Baha Shammah, Mashiach, Yahushai. Give you thanks to the most high and the father. Baha Shammah, Mashiach, Yahushai. So all that we say and do, it's going to be in the name of the Lord and Savior. We just sent up prayers to the most high. Baha Shammah, Mashiach, Yahushai. And... I'm elated to be able to bring forth his word to you today and dealing with, continuing with the order that we have to be in because we see the things that's going on in the world and the agenda is not totally what you might think it is but what they're showing you it to be, you know, because it's still going to come down to their so-called new world order that they're trying to bring about in this world it's about change of the way you see it now. You see the gas prices going up. You see all these things, food prices going up. So all these things are written in the scriptures. It's just a matter of how the Most High is manipulating them and allow them to do what they do so that when you come back, everybody's going to be elated over how this world is and he's going to smash all these kingdoms as he sent a Mashiach of Shai to judge and make war with the power of the Most High, who is the power of Abraham, who had a son named Isaac, who had a son named Jacob. And Jacob became the forefather of the 12 tribes of Israel as his name was changed to Israel. And we became the Israelites without a shadow of a doubt. And so... It's very important. You know, you're looking at what's going on, but where are you going to be when they come for you? Are you going to have this relationship with the Most High? Or are you going to try and get this relationship with the Most High during the time that everything escalate? And it's going to come back to you. Because if they're trying to maintain their kingdom and kingdoms, what is it that's in the way of them continuing with their kingdoms forever and ever and ever? It's you. As an Israelite. It's the Most High. It's the Mashiach Yahushai, which they don't know and never going to know. As the scripture says, in Wisdom Solomon 5 and 7, they're doing what you're supposed to do. It tells you what they're going to say. They're going to say, we weird ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. Yeah. We've gone through deserts where there lay no way. I'm not going to say he's the way. They're going to say, but that's for the way of the Most High, and I'm not going we have not known it. So how do you think in your wildest dreams that you're following someone or anyone that in the end result, they're going to say, we have not known. That's past tense. That's now to when salvation is coming on this earth. When righteousness is coming on this earth, that's going to be forever and ever and ever. This wicked and evil and wretched kingdoms that exist today is going to be done away with. Would you say that these kingdoms are righteous? Can you form your lips to say, yes, America's righteous? Can you form your lips to say any of these kingdoms are righteous? I'm talking to you that know what this Bible is talking about. The laws of the Most High. I don't think you can. I don't think it's possible. Because there's too much wickedness that's going on that you see in your face. Well, we got to change and continue to change and find out 
what it is that we need to change from what we're doing. That's wrong. Because when the judgment comes, it's going to be too late. Or when somebody's sick and you're watching them die and they die, then the judgment. There's going to be a lot of more people dying. As the most I say, he's bringing plagues on this earth. He's bringing the plagues. He the one to have the issues from death and life. He the one that wound. He the one that heals. So now when you step in the zone of who I'm teaching on, the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, is a fearful thing. To fall into the power of the Most High. That's a fearful thing. If it's not spiritual power that He's given you because you're in order with Him. But if you out of order with Him and His servants that He has brought on this earth in these last days to bring this truth to our people, you better watch out. See, that's the only thing I look at us like nobody really paying attention enough to understand the Most High got his hand in everything. He ruled in the kingdom of men. So we allow them to do what they're doing under the power of Satan so he can build it up. So everybody's going to be, you know, who, like they said. They, I mean, it's already said. Look, 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 that's the spirit. <laughs> I mean, they're going to be amazed at how righteousness is going to come on this earth. So who can bring, who can bring them down? Who can bring them down? I mean, if you have control of the money, Resources, all mineral resources, all resources, cutting people off from their existence of how they live, that's power. That's a lot of power. But at the same time, what about the most high? I think people that gave this system more power than the most high. Look, go to Obadiah. This 21 verses that the most high give concerning Edom. The initial Identity of the so-called Caucasian race. That is the superpower of the earth at this time. This is what he says. Obadiah, the second verse, said, Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. Now you tell me who this is if it's not them. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwelleth in the clefts of the rock. Coming from the clefts of the rock, which is the mountains. Coming from, at this time, the Caucasus Mountains, between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea in South Georgia, Russia. Whose habitation is high? Who's higher than them? That says in their heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Who's going to bring me down to the ground? I've showed you. When am I saying I'm saying come back? 2nd Ezra 13, many scriptures. 2nd Ezra 13, 9 to 11. 
He said, he going to annihilate, he going to destroy all the army, the navy, the marines, the air force. There's nothing going to be nothing but dust and smell of smoke. That's the end result. They're going to be scared, but just say, yes, they're going to fight. So that's the end result. Who shall bring me down to the ground? That's what they're saying. Let me get it for you, just in case some of you might be tuning in for the first time. This is the Apocrypha, which the Protestant church took out of the Bible, because it's straightforward. I suggest everybody, if you can, get the University Press, University, uh, Cambridge, Cambridge University Press Apocrypha, which coincides with the King James 611 Bible. The Cambridge University Press. It says, 2nd Ezra 13, they say, who shall bring me down to the ground, right? So it says, in 2nd Ezra 13 and, and 9, because all the nations, I don't give a dang how much they fight against each other, they're going to stop fighting the fight of Mashiach Kavashai when he come back with 200 million angels. But it's going to be him. He said he's going to bring salvation to himself. <laughs> Look, the same ones they killed, the so-called white man put to death, this is what he's saying. Look, this is what he's telling you. Everyone that have ears, if you have eyes to see it, if you open it up and you look at it, you can read it yourself. It says, in 2nd Ezra 13 and 9, it says, because they're asking, who shall bring us down to the ground, right? So it says, and lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, that's the army, the navy, the marines, and the air force of all NATO, you know, all their nations, even the ones that's not with NATO, going to be joined together. They together to, to, to fight Amashia Galvashai. That's why when you look at the, um, when the, the, um, um, I forgot what they call it, whenever they're going, whatever they sent up to the uh, space station, that rocket that they sent, all the people's in, going up to the space station in the sky, when America's blew up, who took over immediately? Russia. Check it out. Because I remember, because that was one of the first time that an uh, um, Israelite school teacher went up in that space shuttle. That's what it's called, space shuttle. It just came to me, to water, most high. So she went up in the space shuttle, and it blew up. I was watching it when it blew up, and Russia took over immediately. Because everybody's together in this. Every army, navy, and marines, and air force, they're going to be afraid, but they're going to fight. This is what it says. Let's take it down to 13 and 9. And lo, well, they ask him, who's going to bring us down to the ground? Let's, and lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand nor held sword. Because he's not coming at back as a man. I'll tell you that in Isaiah 47 and 3. He said, I will not meet thee as a man. This is angelic spiritual power. Listen at it. Nor any instrument of war. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth. As it had been a blast of fire. And out of his lips a flaming breath. And out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. And they were all mixed together. <coughs> the blast of fire. The flaming breath and the great tempest and fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight and burned them up, every one, so that upon a sudden of a renewable multitude nothing was to be perceived but only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. You see? So, that's what's going to bring them down to the ground. Now, Going back to Obadiah, verse 4, give you an identity of who it's talking about. Verse 4, <coughs> though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. Come on. Whose symbol is the bald eagle? If thou canst say. And though thou set thy nest among the stars, they got the space shuttle up there. This will I bring thee down, said the Most High. See? So, these are the things that we're looking at. And how long is it going to take a Mashiach to do this? 
tells us in uh, Revelation 18. And let's look at verse uh, verse 9. Let's look at verse 8. It says, Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, as we just read. For strong is the most high power who judges her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived illicitly with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, America, that mighty city, America, for in one hour is thy judgment come. We're going to take a mashiach of a shadow. Well, we just read one hour to destroy this place. And the merchants of the earth that are all their ships out there in the sea, they had 200,000. When the truckers wasn't bringing forth, they weren't unloading them ships, 200,000 out in the ports here in California. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buy of her merchandise anymore. Then it tells you all the different things that they're benefiting from selling. And it says, verse 15, the merchants of these things, all these things, you can read it down, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment. See, they're going to be afraid then. You think seeing this place be on fire, burning, after my second Shannon told you, he done, he done destroyed the army, the navy, the rings, the air forces of all these kingdoms that's prepared to fight. Ain't going to be nothing but dust and smell of smoke. What you think? You're not going to be afraid then? This fear of the most going to mean something to you then? Outside for being afraid or being scared? Listen to what it says. The merchants of these things, verse 15, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment. Weeping and wailing, crying. And said, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour, so great riches has come to naught. In one hour, so great riches come to nothing. And every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and all as many as trade by sea stood afar off. And cry when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city that said, Who shall bring me down to the ground? And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, America. That's what it's talking about. Wherein we're made rich. We're in made rich. All that has ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour is she made desolate. So that's the end result. That's why the people gonna be God. That's why they're gonna that's why I tell you in Isaiah 14 why they're gonna be cleaving to us. You might think in your wildest dreams that we not the people of this book. But you're going to find out sooner or later. All you that dismiss us from being the chosen people of the Most High, the nations know this. We don't know. Because we've been programmed. Like I like to say, your brain polluted. Your brain is not washed because if you wash something, you clean it. And you clean up through this word. Have the Bible say, okay, show me how you clean by understanding what this Bible is talking about. This is our story. But it can't because their brain's been polluted to believe what the system is putting in front of you and you follow it. And now they come back now and so even certain things they say, oh, there's no mandate now. 
But you already did what you did, what they told you to do. So why isn't there a mandate? Why no mask now? But you already did what they wanted you to do. Hmm. Think about it. But listen. Isaiah 14, for the Most High will have mercy on Jacob. And Jacob, name was changed to Israel, and we became the Israelites, which are 12 tribes, 12 nations that make up one nation, 12 tribes of Israel. That's why you hear me say the Most High, the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Jacob is the forefather of the 12 tribes of Israel. It's very important because who's saying that? So you got to identify yourself as the 12 tribes of Israel. One of those tribes. Or else, the most high is not your power. You can say God all you want to. God is dog spelled backwards. Well, my shadow shy called them dogs. You don't believe me? Mark 7, 24 down. Read it for yourself. Matthew 15, 24 down. He's telling you. So they took dog and made it backwards and came up with God. And y'all calling y'all calling the most high what it is that Amashai well, Shai called them. Only it's backwards. Like that's why I say a lot of people don't you don't understand how the demons in high places that's running everything under the power of Satan operate. They put it in your face, and it seemed like it's right, but it's wrong. And they're laughing at you all the way to the bank because all you do is regurgitating what they want you to regurgitate because you don't read. They say, I mean, Willie Lynch, great grandson, I, I, I put it on there for you. He said, you want to keep something from us? You put it in the book. Y'all ever heard that before? You want to keep something from us? You put it in the book. The most important book that you need to know, know is this Bible. Do you know it well enough to be part of what we're getting ready to read now? Or else you're going to be thrown in the lake of fire. Simple as that. You either going to be here or you'll be thrown in the lake of fire as an Israelite. Straight up. You say all the sinners of my people going to die by the sword. They don't want to take the time to learn this truth. This will be your last time. The lot here. This could be your last time. To learn this truth. So it says in Isaiah 14 and 1. For the most high will have mercy on Jacob. And will yet choose Israel. You won't see what the most high said. He's going to have mercy on any other nation. Prove it. By scriptures. He said he's going to have mercy on Jacob. And will yet choose Israel. Israel, meaning Israelites are the chosen people of the Most High, and set them in their own land. This is what the Most High going to do. No man going to supersede what the Most High say he's going to do, but they have tried. And they think that, ju just a moment. 